Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that is dedicated to helping you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. In my opinion, the best DAW on the market. So I received a correspondence via Twitter from a user named Sean, a reader of my other blog for my recording studio. And he had asked me, Chris, is it possible to import tracks into a template or a new session from another project without corrupting what was already in place in the previous project? And this is very much a possibility. Importing tracks, importing session data from other projects into a new template, a new project, whatever. Very simple, very easy. I'm going to show you that right now. So what we have here is my particular mix template. I have all my tracks laid out. I typically work on rock music and I've got everything laid out the way I like it. As you can see, I have my plugins that I like to use. I have routing and sends and everything all set up and ready to go. So what I would typically do is, is I, I have a session for recording and then I edit the tracks in that recording project file. And once I have all my edits the way I want them, I will open a new mix template, the one that you're seeing, and I will import just the raw audio into the mix template. And this serves me for two reasons. Number one, it separates like the recording editing stage from the mixing stage. And it also keeps my mix template free of extra audio files and bounces that I've done. Because I, I often bounce many tracks. So say I use flex time, I'll bounce a new version. If I use like a uh, selection based processing, whatever, I want to leave myself a bread cr breadcrumb trail, a paper trail so I can go back in case I mess something up. You know, sometimes you mess things up and you just want to be able to go back and save yourself a lot of agony and pain. So how do we import tracks? Well, first you're going to hit key command F, which is going to open the finder and the finder has three tabs for you. The first is the audio files contained within the existing project you're working in because this is a template. It has no audio files. You can go into media, which is like your iTunes library and other things of that nature, GarageBand, and then all files, which is where you start navigating around your computer. And then you have three buttons within that. The first one is the computer button, which shows you the top level directory of any hard drives that you have connected to your computer or within your computer. For example, I have two hard drives contained inside my MacBook, and then I have an external drive. Then you have the home button, which this is going to show you like the user level, everything contained within like my name as the admin on my MacBook. And then this is the music folder on your MacBook. So any projects that you've saved within Logic, this is where they're located if you've saved them on the internal hard drive. I always use an external drive to save all of my projects that I'm working on. So I'm going to go to the computer button here. I'm going to find that hard drive. And then give me a second to just kind of navigate. This is the project that we're going to pick out. Okay, so I've opened, I've gone to the project folder that I want to open. I clicked on it. And it's going to show me the project file followed by all the usual suspects, audio files, bounces, etc. So from here, I'm going to double click on the project file. It's going to ask me, do you want to choose any particular project alternative? Because I use project alternatives to, as another safeguard. Usually it's the first one that they show you. I click OK. From here, we have access to all the tracks within this project that I want to import tracks out of into this template. So you have a couple headings at the top here. Squeeze all this together so you can see it all. First of all, number implies the numbered track in the session. Not super helpful, aside from when you're dealing with track stacks, but whatever. Must be helpful for someone. The name of the track. So it's always good to name your tracks accordingly so you can easily navigate within your project or from one project to another. Content, which means the audio regions or files. Plugins which are the plugins that you've used on those tracks. Sends for any reverbs, delay sends, anything that you've set up. IO for any input information. Say you have a bus, you're going to want to remember the input of certain tracks to that bus and the output. So the output of those tracks that lead into the bus that you've set up for them. And then automation. Let's kind of bring this out. Automation is any automation that you've written on a track. So let's start from the top here. You have the option to import global information. Say you have marker tracks that you've set up that would be very fitting for your song that you're importing. You still want to be able to navigate it without any problems. You can import your marker track or a signature track or the tempo. For example, this is 120 right now. 
But if we want to import the tempo track and replace, now it turns to 160. If I import the marker track in this session here, just replace the marker tracks and boom, it changes. It's super helpful. And then from there, let's say I want to import my overheads and my kick. Very simple. Since I usually just import the audio regions, I would hit add. And you don't need to worry about that. Boom. Now those audio regions are available to us to use. Very simple. And it even places it in the timeline here exactly where you had it in the project before. It's really helpful when you import like 50 tracks and they're all exactly where they need to be. It's perfect. But say that you had some plugins that you really dug that you used on the overheads or the kick. Let's say the kick here. So you could import the kick track with the plugins and add that. And lo and behold, it'll add all those plugins on that track. Or say you imported the kick and you're like, crap, I meant to import those plugins on that kick track. Well, that's easy as well. You can just click on the plugin section here for kick and then hit replace. Now you don't have any plugins currently on this kick track, but say that we had a whole bunch of plugins on the kick track for some odd reason, you can replace those plugins, boom, with the plugins that you had in the previous session. So you can see this is very powerful and it goes even deeper. We can set up the sends to be exa exactly how you had them in the previous session. So let's replace the sends. Now Logic is gonna be very polite and it's gonna ask you, what do you wanna do with the sends? Like you have several dedicated to this track. Do you want me to create new sends with the plugins that you had set up in the previous session? Or do you want me to find sends and auxes that already exist that have similar names, similar structure? So for example, if I've got a send that I call hall for hall reverb, and I used a hall reverb on this kick, and there's also a hall reverb in this mix template, do you want me to just use that and set up the send that way? But in this case, we're just gonna say add all, and boom, it set up the three sends and you can't quite see them, but boom, the plugins are all set up, routing, the level, you know, the output is just a stereo, perfect. Now, say that there was some automation on this kick that I need to write as well, no problem replace the existing automation because the kick track already exists here. Watch this, replace, boom. And you can see there's a little spike there. Perfect. I mean, Logic really takes care of everything for you. The big difference between add and replace is if you're adding a track or adding plugins or anything, if you're adding, it's going to create a new track with that session data that you're wanting to import. So if you wanna bring in a new kick track with just the audio region, if you hit add, it's gonna create a whole new region in the session. If you just wanna add the plugins, watch, like I have this kick track highlighted. I wanna bring in these plugins. When I hit add, it creates a new track with those plugins and just the plugins. So that's something to be careful of. When you hit replace, it replaces whatever's here or in automation or anything. It replaces the existing information with the information that you're importing. So one last note for you. This here is a track stack and you can tell it's a track stack because there's the number for drum, okay, one. But everything below it has a parentheses around it. The parentheses implies that it's part of a track stack. And I like to use track stacks because it makes easy processing for you know, the entire drum set or all the vocals or whatever. So in this case, if you're gonna import a track stack, I suggest that you import everything related to the track stack. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to import the inputs and outputs because I have different sends and I have different things going on. You wanna keep all that can you know keep all that contained and well managed. And it's so easy. I click on the top track, which is the main bus of the whole track stack, go down to the bottom parentheses here, holding shift, I click and it selects all. So I'm gonna bring in the content, I'm gonna bring in all the plugins, all the sends that I have routed, all the inputs and outputs. And let's see, say even the automation. So now we're gonna add this whole track stack. So it's gonna take a second. Again, do you want to add these buses or do you want me to just find buses that already exist and just kind of piece it together? Let's add all. And 
and boom. It takes a second, you know, it's going a little crazy. But we open this drum track stack, and let me just shrink everything down for you. And it brought in all these audio files, and it brought in all my routing, all my sends, all my plugins. Everything is contained and ready to go. It's a fantastic way of working. It's very easy. This is much better than trying to remember what plugin you put on what track or trying to write down what automation that you wrote that you got to remember. So easy. It's just another reason why Logic Pro 10 rules. So I hope that was helpful to you. If you did find it helpful, I highly suggest either subscribing to this YouTube channel or going to the website, whylogicprorules.com and subscribing to the email list. There's going to be content every week and it's all geared towards helping you get the best you can out of Logic. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time.